All right, so we're going to do a couple of examples um, using polar coordinates to evaluate integrals. Uh, the first one is a volume problem. Okay, so the first thing we need to do in this problem is realize that the volume that we're trying to compute is the volume under a graph. It's the graph of this function here, f of x, y. And it's a volume over a region. What region? This disk in the xy plane um, that this thing sits over, right? So, so d is, is given by, well, here's one way to do it. Uh, x squared plus y squared has to be between 0 and 1, right? Um, so it, it's all the region that is everything that is on and inside the unit circle. That's a region of integration, okay? So we could set this up in rectangular coordinates, right? In, in rectangular coordinates, uh, it would look something like this. Rectangular coordinates, we would do something like minus one to one, uh, minus the square root one minus x squared to plus square root one minus x squared 1 minus x squared minus y squared dy times dx. You could do that integral, but you probably don't want to, right? It's, it's going to be, it's, okay, frankly, it's going to be a pain in the ass to do this integral, right? There's going to be a lot of work because once you've done the y integral, I mean, the antiderivative is not so bad. But then you're plugging in these square root functions, right, for y, uh, before trying to do the integral with respect to x, and you can see that it's not going to be very pleasant to evaluate that integral. Um, so instead what we do is we say, well, how do I describe this region in polar coordinates? So in polar coordinates, the nice thing about, about disks is that disks in polar coordinates are rectangles. Um, this is the same thing as saying that r is between 0 and 1. And we're doing the whole way around, right? We're using the whole disk. So theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. And so I can convert this thing to polar coordinates, like so. 0, 2 pi, 0, 1. Um, now, the x squared minus, so this is x squared plus y squared, right? I can, I can do this x squared plus y squared, that's r squared in polar coordinates. So this becomes 1 minus r squared. Uh, don't forget that the volume element is now r dr d theta. Okay. And now you go from here. Now, nothing depends on theta. Right? You can do the theta integral right away if you want. Um, we just get 2 pi because it's constant with respect to theta. We're going from 0 to 2 pi. So 2 pi, integral from 0 to 1, we have r minus r cubed. And that's a simple integral, right? Uh, we just need to find antiderivatives for a polynomial. So we have 2 pi times r squared over 2 minus r to the 4 over 4. We evaluate from 0 to 1. Half minus a quarter is a quarter times 2 pi. We get pi over 2 for our integral. OK. That's not so bad. In fact, that was easy enough that uh, I think we have time to do the second one in the same video. We're only four minutes in. So let's move to this one. Well. Here's our region. Again, it really helps to sketch things out. Make sure you know what you're looking at. What is the region? Well, OK, y is bigger than or equal to 0. So we're in the upper half plane. Um, circles, so we have two circles, right? x squared plus y squared equals 1. x squared plus y squared equals 4. That's a circle of radius 2. OK, and our region is well, it's everything in here. So it's this sort of half annulus, if you like. Okay, that's our region. And again, this is an easy region to describe in polar coordinates, because in polar coordinates, this is just saying that r 
goes, right? So the radius of the smaller circle is 1. The radius of the bigger circle is 2. Theta goes from 0. Well, we don't go all the way around. We only go halfway around. So theta goes from 0 to pi. All right? So if I'm doing this in polar coordinates, I have something that looks like this. Integral from 0 to pi. Integral from 1 to 2. And now, okay, I do have to deal with the integrand, right? So x is what in polar coordinates? Oh, actually, do I even bother with the x? Here's, here's something that if, you're, if you want to be a little bit clever, um, you can think of this as, right, there's two integrals here. There, there's this one. And then, right, remember, this is a property of integrals. We can do that. So we might ask, uh, what's the value of that first integral? Um, if you said 0, you're right. Why is it 0? Well, this is an odd function of x, right? Um, x values on this side are equal and opposite x values on that side. Okay? And we can see that our region is symmetric about the y-axis, right? For every x value over here, there's a corresponding minus x value over here, right? So you're going to get equal and opposite contributions from either half of the region for this function. That's going to cancel out. So we know that that integral is going to be 0 before we even bother converting to polar coordinates. Throw it in if you like, check, make sure this works out, right? Put in a 3 r cos theta, you'll see it works out. You don't have to take my word for it. Um, you can check yourself. But let's just deal then with the 4y squared. So remember that y is r sine theta in polar coordinates. So r squared sine squared theta. And remember that our dA becomes r dr d theta, okay? So this time we can't do the theta integral right away because we do have some theta dependence in the integrand. We've got to deal with them one at a time. Let's deal with r first. So first note that I have r squared times r, so I have r cubed. So maybe I want to take care of that first. Well, 4r cubed, oh, we know what 4r cubed. 4r cubed is the derivative of r to the 4. So we have 0 to pi, we have sine squared theta, okay, sorry. And then we have simply r to the 4, and we're evaluating from 1 to 2. That's not so bad, okay, All right? So if you want, where did that r to the 4 come from? I have r squared times r, that's r cubed times 4. 4r four cubed, 4r cubed is the derivative of r to the 4. Plug in the limits, 2 to the 4 is 16 minus 1. There's a 15 coming from that, so let's put that 15 out front. So 15, 0 to pi, sine squared. You're going to see a lot of even powers of trig functions when you're doing polar coordinate integrals, um, so you're going to rely pretty heavily on these... Um, these reduction formulas, right? These half angle identities. So sine or double angle, however you want to call this. Sine squared theta is 1 minus cos 2 theta over 2 d theta. You can probably already see that that's not going to contribute to the integral, but uh, let's, let's, let's be thorough. Let's put it in. Um, so out front, there's a 15 over 2. Let's bring that 2 out. Theta minus one half sine two theta, and we're evaluating from zero to pi. So here we're just going to get a pi, right? Pi minus zero. Um, here it's going to be either sine two pi or sine zero. Both of those are zero. So like I said, this doesn't contribute. We're just going to get fifteen pi over two, and. Then we're done.